every year, more than a million Americans are diagnosed with diabetes. Surprisingly, nearly half of people with diabetes don't know they have the disease. As part of Diabetes Awareness Month, Mount Carmel is working to raise awareness about prevention, early detection, and treatment. Joining us today from Mount Carmel is Dr. Kanishka Patel to help us better understand how we can protect our health. Welcome, thank you for being here, Dr. Thank Patel. Thanks for having me. Okay, please ma'am, if you would help us understand the basics and better understand what is diabetes. Absolutely, so diabetes is a chronic condition that affects how our body processes our blood sugar, glucose, which is our main source of energy. So normally our pancreas produces insulin, which is what helps drive glucose into our cells. In type one diabetes, our pancreas just doesn't make insulin at all. Mm. Type two diabetes is where our pancreas still makes insulin, but it's just not as effective. And this is referred to as insulin resistance. Oh, please go oh, ahead. And then there's just gestational diabetes as well, which develops during pregnancy, but it does put you at higher risk for developing type two diabetes later in life. So three different types of diabetes. Yes. And this is a disease that affects millions. Absolutely. Uh, tell us more about the prevalency of it. So according to the CDC, approximately 38 million Americans are living with diabetes. So that's about one in nine people. Mm. And approximately nine million Americans don't even know they have diabetes. That is surprising because yeah. there are symptoms. Is this just a matter of not paying attention what our body's telling us? So it's not. A lot of people just associate you get diabetes with excessive sugar intake and it's really much more than that. Mm -hmm. So if you're over the age of 45, if you have a sedentary lifestyle, um, if you carry extra weight and your BMI is above 30, those are all risk factors. Also having a family history with a parent or sibling who has diabetes, or if you've previously had gestational diabetes yourself, that also puts you at risk. Okay, so these are the risk factors. Mm -hmm. Now, how can we, and our friends watching, yeah. what can we do in order to prevent it? Is there a way we can reduce our risk? Great question. So the big thing that I tell all my patients is small sustainable habits is what leads to measurable outcomes. Starting with moving daily. We recommend 150 minutes of exercise per week. So a 30 minute brisk walk has shown to reduce insulin resistance. And also eating intentionally, focus on your lean proteins, increase your fiber intake, and just eat real foods. Avoid the processed carbs, no matter how tempting they are. <laughs> oh, and they are tempting. Yeah. Is it okay to splurge every now and then as long as we balance it out? Is balance okay? Or are we talking about a stricter diet? So yeah, my game, always aim for progress, not perfection. Everything in moderation is key. So even a 5% reduction in body weight, if you are overweight, has shown to significantly reduce long-term complications. I like that you said progress, not perfection. Yeah. I need to put that on my fridge. <laughs> I like that. Now, how can our primary doctor, um, how can our primary doctor help out? Uh, whether we're concerned about diabetes or managing diabetes, what role can they play? Absolutely, so I think primary care shines in prevention. That's where it happens, right? So I'm not just reacting to a high blood sugar number, I'm looking at my patient's subtle trends over the years before diabetes even develops. So I'm looking at your blood pressure, your glucose, but your weight, your waist circumference. And then we're tying that in with your lifestyle and talking about, hey, how is your diet? How is your exercise? And then also talking about sleep and stress levels because that all affects and then being a partner with my patient where I set up a customized individualized treatment plan to really help prevent long-term outcomes. So the primary care physician helps out a lot. Absolutely. But what mm -hmm. about for folks watching right now who may not have a primary care physician, what should they do? Yeah, so that's really important, establishing a long-lasting relationship with a physician that you can trust and they can keep an eye on the trajectory of your health over your lifespan. So Mount Carmel has over 300 primary care physicians that are accepting new patients and you can actually find them at mountcarmelhealth.com. Okay, if somebody gets the diagnosis, um, is it something where their life is going to be completely changed or is it something that won't be as affecting um, than that we may be uh, assuming it will be? Sure, so it's individualized depending on the severity of the diagnosis, how early we intervene with treatment. So that's why raising awareness is so important to help prevent but if we are diagnosed, treating it aggressively. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, and for more information, I'm sure there's still, you, you gave us a wealth of information to digest, <laughs> but I'm sure that folks out there may have a few more questions. Where can they go to get some more answers? Absolutely, mountkarmahealth.com has several resources that can help you find a primary care provider who can work with you individually in helping you support. Dr. Patel, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>